2017 Mercedes-AMG GLE 43 4Matic. If the V8-powered Mercedes-AMG GLE 63 is Coca-Cola Classic, then consider the V6 Mercedes-AMG GLE 43 to be Coke Zero. Not quite the same as the premier version, the GLE 43 midsize luxury crossover SUV attempts to bottle the essential ingredients of its six-figure AMG stable made into a less potent but sweeter priced, $68,145 package. As with Mercedes-AMG's other 43 batch products, this GLE class variant is motivated by a twin-turbocharged 3.0-liter V6 engine. Armed with 362 horsepower and 384 pounds to foot of torque, the AMG Twin 6 boasts an additional 33 horses and 30 pounds to foot of torque over the similarly sized and configured V6 that powered the discontinued Mercedes-Benz GLE 400. The engine isn't the GLE 43's only powertrain component that the Mercedes performance team breathed on, though, as AMG also tweaked the 9-speed automatic transmission and the all-wheel drive system, the latter defaulting to a 40-60% front-to-rear torque distribution. Unfortunately, the GLE 43's mechanical upgrades provide few real-world performance gains compared with the GLE 400 it essentially replaces. While the GLE 43 scoots from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5.4 seconds, or 0.1 second quicker than a 2016 GLE 400 with a 7-speed automatic transmission, the AMG's 5 to 60, 30 to 50, and 50 to 70 mile per hour times of 6.5, 3.4, and 4.4 seconds were slower than those of the older, less powerful model by 0.3 seconds and across the board. In fairness to our selenite gray, $720, AMG test vehicle, it was saddled with an extra 244 pounds versus the GLE 400. The GLE 43 does benefit from the fitment of 14.8-inch front and 13.6-inch rear brake rotors in place of the GLE 400's 13.8 and 13.0-inch units as well as a standard air spring suspension in place of the GLE 400 steel coil springs. Equipped with a set of optional 21-inch wheels wrapped in Continental Cross Contact Summer Performance Tires, a $1,000 package, this GLE 43 came to a halt from 70 miles per hour in 172 feet and circled our 300-foot skid pad at 0.77 grams. However, consider that our long-term Audi Q7, also on summer tires, managed to stop from 70 miles per hour in just 155 feet and post 0.90 grams on the skid pad. The GLE 43 isn't devoid of modernity, however, and it's available with a host of contemporary safety features. The $5,010 premium 3 package adds adaptive cruise control, lane keeping assist, automated emergency braking, and blind spot monitoring, as well as the contents of the $2,120 premium 2 package, sunshades for the rear passenger windows, heated and cooled front cup holders, adaptive LED headlights with automatic high beams, and more. This GLE 43 also featured the brand's Magic Vision Control, $350, that replaces traditional hood-mounted washer fluid spray nozzles with wiper arms that feature multiple holes to spread the fluid across the windshield. A panoramic sunroof tacked on $1,090, and a trailer hitch was another $575. Tallied up, our GLE 43 test car's myriad options added $17,800 to the sticker and netted an S-tested price of $85,945, $10,000 more than our similarly equipped long-term Audi Q7 that is more enjoyable to drive and provides seating for up to 7 passengers. Not as refined or as versatile as some of its competition and without the extra extroverted personality of the costlier, 550-horsepower GLE 63, the Mercedes-AMG GLE 43 suffers from being based on one of Mercedes-Benz's oldest vehicles. 
but the 43 formula has proven a winner in newer models like the GLC 43 and the E43, so perhaps the next GLE 43 will be more satisfying. <laughs> Two thousand seventeen Mercedes Benz Z four hundred four Matic wagon. If you don't already have old money, you can't get it. A freshly acquired fortune is, by definition, new money. Buy all the seventh homes, helicopters, and significant others you like, but those who bemoan estate taxes over braised ostrich reserves will still think you're the weirdo. Money can't buy pedigree, although it can buy a pedigreed Mercedes Benz. The E-Class wagon's lineage stretches back to the 1970s, and the redesigned, W213 generation model continues to represent the discerning option in the Mercedes lineup. In our crossover crazed world, it's contrary and sans irony, like a smoking jacket worn not in vogue but because the wearer has smoked Cubans since the Taft administration. Only a small cloister of Americans each year, said to be among Mercedes-Benz's richest and most loyal customers here, opt for the E-Class wagon instead of nouveau riche G-Wagons or predictable S-Classes. That taste lends the station wagon its quiet confidence, its air of amply nourished bank accounts. Not so low-key looks. Mercedes-Benz's stylists seem to have forgotten the A400s under the radar mission, though. Their addition of more roof and glass to the stoic E-Class sedan streamlines the profile into a tidy bustle graced by two wide, thin lamps seemingly pulled from Benz's coupes. The quiet, meltingly lovely result is longer and lower than its predecessor and arguably prettier than Volvo's V90 wagon. It also can hold 35 cubic feet of chattels behind the second row seats, 22 more cubes than fit in the E-Class sedan's trunk. We use that space which expands to 57 cubic feet with the rear seats folded flat, to move an apartment's worth of boxed kitchen and living room items. For carrying smaller passengers in a pinch, a rear-facing third-row seat deploys from the trunk floor. With these changes and a twin-turbocharged V6 engine replacing the old wagon's 3.5-liter V6, the E400 is 382 pounds heavier than the four-cylinder, all-wheel drive E300. The E400 wagon has 4 Matic all-wheel drive as standard, typically, such weight gain would earn a condemnation from us. Here, it adds a sense of classic Mercedes heft, a satisfying expression of solidity that the dainty E300 nears but can't quite equal. Power that suffices. The V6 is the same engine that powers the AMG Badge D43 sedan that won our latest comparison test of mid-size sports sedans, albeit detuned to 329 horsepower from 396. It erases our complaints about the 241 horsepower E300 spokenness, shaving 1.4 seconds from the sedan's 0 to 60 mph time and providing strain-free passing power and a better soundtrack. For now, it is exclusive to the E-Wagon, Coupe, and Convertible. Next year, Mercedes-Benz plans to add an E-400 to the sedan range. Unsurprisingly, the E-400 wagon drives much like the ultra-smooth E-Class sedan. With the must-have $1,900 air springs and adjustable dampers, the Benz wafts down the road on a magic carpet of comfort and solitude. As if this needed enhancing, Mercedes offers a $1,100 acoustic comfort package that quiets the wagon even further with thicker window glass and additional sound attenuation throughout the cabin. In practice, it virtually eliminates the interior booming over road imperfections common to wagons and SUVs in which the cargo hold is open to the cabin. Stiffer suspension settings and sportier throttle and transmission calibrations are a flick of a center console switch away, although none truly transform the comfort-driven experience. In the hardiest Sport Plus driving mode, the 9-speed automatic transmission cracks off earnest downshifts and holds lower gears longer, but the suspension still allows the nose to gently bob up and down under hard braking and acceleration. In every driving mode, the steering is isolated and the brake pedal squishy. That's not to say the E400 isn't capable. Our test car was outfitted in sport regalia, 
which replaces the no-cost luxury trim levels hood ornament and traditional grill with a three-pointed star embedded in a more aggressive grille. Choosing the sport model also nets you different wheels, bumpers, side skirts, and a slightly lowered suspension. Fitted with 18-inch summer tires, the E400 recorded an impressive 0.87 grams of grip on the skid pad and a sports sedan like 156 foot stop from 70 miles per hour. E is in equipped. Leave the dynamism, as the Germans call it, to the upcoming Jaguar XF Sport Brake or the Porsche Panamera Sport Turismo. Or the 603 horsepower, trust funds gone wild Mercedes AMG E63 S wagon. Set the E400 to its default comfort mode and request one of eight different massages, including one that alternately jiggles each side of your rear end to enhance blood flow on long drives. Crossing the country? Definitely go for the high intensity setting. Those chairs are included with the $11,200 premium 3 package which is more expensive and better than premium one or two. It adds a self-parking system, a 360-degree camera, keyless entry and push-button ignition, ambient interior lighting, a Burmester audio system, adaptive LED headlights with automatic high beams, heated front seats, a cabin perfuming system, sunshades for each rear window, blind spot monitoring, Mercedes-Benz semi-autonomous driving technologies, a head-up display, and even more. Checking the premium 3 box also is the only way to unlock the optional $850 12.3-inch digital gauge cluster that matches the standard 12.3-inch central dashboard display. We suggest doing this, because the screen and its graphics are gorgeous, even if the menus are only superficially intuitive. Diving deeper into the system's nooks and crannies takes more concentration, whether using the steering wheel touchpads, the center console rotary knob, the touchpad atop that knob, the dashboard buttons, or the system's voice controls. Other options on our test car included the $450 ventilation function for the front seats, $620 heated rear seats, the $600 warmth and comfort package, heated armrests and steering wheel, the $1,090 panoramic sunroof, and $720 Piedmont green metallic paint. The $4,900 quilted macchiato beige and saddle brown napa leather interior option and $1,300 striped magnolia wood trim are not only sumptuous, they endow the E400's cabin with the relaxing ambience of a yacht. It is a divine environment. Considering all of this, the Benz's price could have six digits and we shrug and agree. Mercedes instead raises the curtain at a vaguely attainable $63,225. Our fully loaded example came to $88,405. If there's a time or a place for suggesting that an expensive car's price seems too low, it is here. Wealth impersonator and 1980s icon Ferris Bueller said it best. Even if he was describing a Ferrari, it is so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend picking one up.